Whoa, different angle today, huh guys? Intro to pedals for the E36 and 54 swap. Here they are. We are going to be putting them in the E36 today. Okay guys, before we start, I wanna give a quick shout out to my mentee, Tyler McMurray. He is an awesome kid from the Johnson City School District in the local town of Binghamton. I am part of a mentoring program that's offered through my work, and I need to tell you, this kid is an awesome kid. He is valuable, he is interesting, and he is fun. So, I wanna let you know, hey, Tyler, here's looking at you, kid. Pedals. We are talking about pedals today. Clutch, brake, and the accelerator pedal. So, I put together a handy dandy little diagram here with some part numbers and some diagrams for some lines and accelerator and wiring. Diagrammatically, this is how it works. You have your master cylinder here and you have your pedal, pedal right here, <laughs> pushing and pulling against that slave cylinder. So it's always taking fluid and moving it from one place to the other and that's all that these two cylinders are doing and they're just trading fluid from one to the other. It goes to, in this case for the E36 N54 SWAT, it's going, we are going to be using a couple of special lines that are not just your typical uh, standard bubble flare. Uh, this is a hard line that has a special hookup into the master cylinder. There's the part number right there if you ever wanted to look it up. Then it goes into your stainless steel line. We're having ours provided by Garagistic. It is basically an E30 line that has two female ends on either side. It's about 10 to 12 inches long, and it's going to connect the master cylinder to the slave cylinder. But before it goes to the slave cylinder, it's gonna go through another hard line. And that hard line, part number right here, goes right to your slave. So, this is basically the overall setup for the clutch. When this, when this pedal pushes in, it pushes the fluid through this line into your slave cylinder and that pushes your uh, pressure uh, your your pressure plate fingers in and that is what releases your clutch that allows that that disconnects the constantly spinning engine flywheel from the input shaft of your transmission and then when you let it go the spring of the clutch naturally wants to push back on that flywheel to, con to, to re-engage the spinning flywheel with the clutch. And that's how you can kind of feather the clutch a little bit. You kind of making connection, disconnecting, making connection. And all that, that, that tire framework is, um, is uh, adjustable through the pushing of your clutch pedal. So this is an automatic brake pedal. Large, clunky, obsolete. It needs to be replaced with a more slick two-pedal system, a smaller brake pedal with an accompanying clutch. Let's do that now, shall we? Now let's talk accelerator pedal. On all BMWs made before the late 90s, accelerator pedals used to be just a spring-loaded pedal that uh, connects to a, a cable mechanism that pulls a throttle uh, body on the intake of your, um, of your engine. It's gotten a little bit more sophisticated since then and allows for more accurate tuning, but we have an electronic pedal, which is actually just two potentiometers that, that rotate as you press the pedal in and, and have it naturally spring back out. I say two potentiometers, they're built there for redundancy. Each potentiometer typically is a three-wire potentiometer. It's typically how, how uh, pots work. We call them pots for short. Uh, not that kind of pot. So this is our wiring harness for the pedal. It's six wires. Two potentiometers, six wires. Comes from the cable. Each group of uh, two groups of three wires has its positive five volts has its negative ground, and its sense wire. The sense wire is really what detects the difference between your maximum voltage potential and your minimum voltage potential. And anything in between that tells the engine through the DME what uh, the air-fuel ratio should be, what the load should be, what the throttle body angle should be on the engine. So everything is electronically controlled on all newer BMW engines made from the late 90s on. So when you do an engine swap, 
uh, for uh, a, a new modern engine into an old chassis, you need to make these types of provisions. Um, and this goes directly into the 6001 connector. And yes, I said 6001, not 6001. This is 6000 plus a one at the end of it. I think people commonly misconstrue that, but it is a 6001 connector. And that's where all the engine body harness connectors, uh, 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 pins and functions end up going to in the DME. Um, this one here has a kick down uh, when you push it hard enough, this electronic uh, switch down there that pushes and turns the ECU, tells the ECU and the transmission to, to kick it down a gear um, if in case you're going on high speeds or something like that. So we need to remove this pedal assembly, we need to replace it with this guy and, uh, and get it installed. So that's next. I realize that I need to do some fab work to the footwell in order to get the accelerator pedal to, to line up and notch in and sit well. So in order to do that, I need to remove the carpet, or at least that section, this front section of the carpet. In order to do that, I need to remove the seat. But we don't have battery, and I have two six volt bat lantern batteries that I hooked up in series to create 12 volts. And these batteries are big enough where, um, it gives me just about enough amperage to do almost anything I want to do, so just wired them up to some alligator clips, and I was able to extract the connector that I need underneath the seat. I found it. I was able to pull it. Um, I got access to the two front bolts here because the seat was all the way back, so I got easy access there. Um, now it's a matter of moving the seat forward and get the access to the back bolt. Then I could take the seat out, then I could fold the carpet over, and then I can get access to the footwell. One. Oh, wrong way. Swap them backwards. Look at that, huh? Look at that, it moves! I'm rich! Seats out. Carpet can now be folded. Access to front pedal area is now granted. All right, so there's this white bracket here for the accelerator pedal. This does not, uh, is not compatible with that, so there is an M6 threaded bolt here that I put a nut on, and I'm going to take that nut, and I'm gonna place it where it needs to be in order for this to sit exactly where it needs to be. This looks like a pretty good spot, and I'm gonna weld it in its place. And that is going to get the bottom part of this secured. The top part is going to end up going through and getting secured somehow to this, uh, to this um, uh, threaded nut there, and uh, I'm going to fab something up in order to get it sitting into this into this little slot. So I'm going to make something that uh, fabs up, and it's going to basically what's going to happen is the pedal will just kind of slide down from the top down, and then it'll get go on like that, and then you just thread that in, and it's uh, pretty much secure. This nut sits very close to the metal structure here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little piece of bracket, I'm gonna put the nut through it, like this, and I'm going to weld that bracket to the nut, and that is gonna go probably something like that, right? So in this guy, when it's sitting, it'll sit right in there and it'll screw right into the nut. So this is a little bracket that I made. It kind of screws in with an M8, um, just an angle bracket, welded up so it's uh, at the right length. Um, I've got my uh, welded nut down there, and the idea is that this um, is supposed to slip right over, which it does. Oh, didn't really slip yet. Kind of, kind of fun. There we go. Slips right in there, and then. This 
there's a wiring harness up in here and it's in the way. It was in the way when I was trying to remove it and it's in the way now and I'm trying to reinstall it. Okay, it's in. So now you can see the master cylinder and the hole that's punched in the firewall where the line uh, is supposed to go through. So I'm not going to install this because I'm gonna end up painting the engine bay anyway, but I am going to stick a screwdriver through the hole. And I'm gonna see where the heck that thing goes. Found it. It is right down there. You can see that shiny thing on there. That's the screwdriver sticking out. And oh, by the way, the brake master cylinder reservoir has provisions right here. And that is where the hose is gonna go down and it's gonna go right into the top of the master cylinder. So we are all set here. This is that special tube that hooks into the master cylinder and it's gonna end up getting installed somewhere up there. And as you can see, it's got provisions for the, uh, the bending to go around the footwell and then go down into here, into the, um, uh, to make connections to the stainless steel line. From the stainless steel line, it's gonna go into this line, which needs to be um, replaced, but it will end up going into this line. And then that guy has a special connector on the end. And then it's gonna go into the slave cylinder, which gets installed right up in there into the transmission and it pushes in and out on the clutch. So I'm gonna to have to do that another time, but for now, I consider this episode concluded. Guys, that's just about does it for the clutch line and pedals today. Um, we do have a little bit more work to do, as you can probably tell with the clutch line and flaring a line and, and, do, and putting in the garagistic stainless steel braided line in there. But we're gonna do that after the engine is out. So we'll end up continuing with that on another episode. But for now, we are done. Please like, comment, subscribe, do anything you want, leave a comment. Guys, leave a comment for Tyler. Say, hey bud, what's up, how you doing? Um, I appreciate that. That would be cool. Um, thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in, and we will catch up on the next episode. Peace.